for much of this new century. We enjoyed the results of investments in technology made in the 70s and 80s for defense purposes. Our innovation edge and military edge were a given. Our investments in innovation built a powerful force and helped assure our military dominance during a time when our competitors were in disarray. Some of those same investments enabled the technology sector to flourish. Today, 20 years later, we face a different reality. Our strategic competitors are closing the technological gap. And this has a direct impact on our economic and military power as well. We remain the world leaders in innovation, but our margin of advantage is smaller. Our competitors have watched us. They've invested in critical capabilities and they are challenging us in the air, sea, land, and new technological domains, including AI. We are in the midst of a strategic competition. The fact that AI is at the center of an economic and military competition must focus the American mind, as we say in our report released yesterday. Fortunately, those of us working on AI and national security are benefiting from a rare moment of countrywide enthusiasm, bipartisanship, and unity. In the last eight months since we started this journey, our commission, we have seen an incredible energy, focus, and willingness to work together towards a common goal, to get AI right. To date, our commissioners have received more than 100 classified and unclassified briefings during their four meetings and 17 workshops since we started in March. The staff has also held more than 200 engagements with government officials, private sector experts, academics, and human rights groups. Every agency and group we have met has generously shared their time and expertise. So we thank you all. We, along with many of you, are truly part of a growing coalition dedicated to ensuring that the United States will responsibly lead the world in AI for the security of the American people and for the benefit of humanity. I believe that the assessments you will find in our interim report released yesterday will help frame the issues we face, will ask the right questions, and will serve as a strong foundation as we begin developing our recommendations. As our work continues, we will share the results of our efforts in the most transparent way possible. Through events like this today, media and public engagements, direct feedback from all of you, and our reports. It is my pleasure to kick off the NSEAI's first conference titled Strength Through Innovation, the Future of AI and U.S. National Security. I would like to thank so many of distinguished guests that are here with us today. Our understanding and the direction of our next steps will be improved by your insight and feedback. Help us improve our assessments and help us get the recommendations right. Before we begin, I have just a quick of, uh, admin notes. We'll be moving quickly throughout the day without many breaks, so please feel free to plan your own breaks. We have coffee along the wall outside and the restrooms are near the lobby. Please also take a moment right now to silence your cell phones. With that, I will hand over the stage to Representative Elise Stefanik, the ranking member of the Armed Services Subcommittee on Intelligence and Emerging Threats. Representative Stefanik has been one of our key supporters in this effort, and I'm so excited she's with us today here to kick off this important event. Thank you, Illy, for those kind opening remarks. It is truly an honor to be here with you all this morning and great to see so many familiar faces. I want to start off by thanking each of the commissioners for their hard work. And in particular, I want to thank Eric Schmidt and Bob Work for their leadership as, care, as chair and vice chair. We truly have an incredible group of experts with varied backgrounds and extraordinary talents here today. And this includes the hardworking staff members supporting the incredible work of the commission. So to all of you, thank you for your dedication and service to our nation. And let's give the staff a round of applause for all of the hard work. We have so much to discuss today. Let me start by providing some context. On March 20th of last year, I introduced legislation in the House of Representatives to establish a national level commission to review advances in artificial intelligence, the competitiveness of our efforts, and the implications of AI to our national security. 
This bill soon became law with the signing of the National Defense Authorization Act in August of that same year. And now, just a little over a year later, here we are today, surrounded by the leading minds and visionaries in the field of AI. And propelled by the recently released interim report of this commission, the National Security Commission on Artificial Intelligence. This is a truly remarkable achievement. And the speed at which this commission was able to organize is a testament to the hard work and dedication of many people in this room today. And it is also a reflection of how critical this topic is for the future of our nation. But as we all know, this work is just beginning. One of the main reasons I introduced legislation to form a commission was our lack of national level dialogue on such an important and transformative emerging technology. From a national security perspective, we are certainly seeing our adversaries implement aggressive strategic plans at the national level and simultaneously increasing their research and development budgets. Russia has increased their basic research by nearly 25%. China is increasing R&D at an alarming pace and wants to lead the world in AI by 2030. More and more, we also see China creating barriers that support their domestic capacity while also exploiting and monopolizing key AI-enabling commodities such as data. The effect is to replace dependencies on foreign investments, companies, and technologies and further erase any civil-military divide. Aside from the obvious benefits of China creating millions of domestic jobs for their workforce, there are distinct national security implications at stake should they corner the market on advanced technologies critical to our national security. All of these efforts could propel Russia and China to leap ahead in many of the tech sectors we will talk about today. But as I have said before, dictatorships have these advantages, and their use of technologies and information is as much about exerting control over their own populations as it is confronting free societies such as ours. Nonetheless, adversarial dominance is not a foregone conclusion. We should remember that in the end, this is not about our adversaries. This is about what the United States can and must do to improve and maintain our technological edge for this information-enabled 21st century economy. This is why the National Security Commission on Artificial Intelligence is so vitally important. What we discuss today, and indeed what this commission discovers and recommends in the coming months, must be translated into action to inform and reform our national level efforts so that the United States remains home to the world's leading experts, researchers, and technological breakthroughs in AI. As designed, and as we have seen from the momentum created thus far, this commission stands in a unique position to drive this much needed national level dialogue for AI and to energize our domestic industrial base that will provide jobs and opportunities across many of the sectors we will talk about today. And as part of this dialogue, Congress must play a leading role in these efforts as well. And while the law that created this commission originated in the defense bill, the actionable recommendations will demand a broader call to action that spans across Capitol Hill since AI is such a transformative technology. We are seeing AI affect transportation, manufacturing, healthcare, agriculture, in addition to national security. And because AI is changing the way we live our lives, Congress has a responsibility to understand its applications, capabilities, and limitations. Congress represents the full breadth of our nation, and through our constituents, we are directly attuned to the safety, security, and economic interests of our country. When well-informed policy meets bipartisan support, Congress can lead the American people and direct resources at scale and unlike any other governing body in the world. This includes ensuring we lead the world in research and development and ethical AI applications that empower individuals, create business opportunities, and strengthen our national security. Congress will also play a significant role in identifying and understanding the risks associated with advances in AI under the law of armed conflict, international norms, humanitarian law, escalation dynamics, and other ethical considerations related to AI, machine learning, and associated technologies. 
When Congress sets the right conditions and dedicates the right resources, the American people will have the opportunity to ensure that AI reflects our values as we lead the world in the advancement of this transformative technology. Fortunately, Congress and indeed our nation will have the momentum of this commission to build on. And while we have significant expectations of this commission and anxiously await your final recommendations, we do so while continuing to offer our full support and confidence because the threats we face and opportunities we have been presented demand that we energize and organize this country to ensure that policy keeps pace with technology. So as you continue your hard work, you have my commitment that Congress, too, will keep our sleeves rolled up to legislate this broader call to action. Thank you again to the commission and all of our members here today for allowing me to speak. Thank you for the partnership with my office. I look forward to a productive session today, and I look forward to the summary. I wish I could stay longer, but I have to head back home to my district in upstate New York. But it's great to be with you to kick things off. Thank you very much.